What's up, everybody? Welcome to the 13th episode of The Crossroads, celebrating 20 years of the Xbox brand. My name is Ryan Turford, and this is the show where we're counting down the months to the 20 year anniversary of the original Xbox with 50 of the best games to play on the console for both new and experienced owners. We dive into the brief history of each game and talk about what makes them awesome. Now, as always, we'd love your feedback on this and all of our shows over on Twitter at the Xbox Drive, or you can reach out to me directly anytime at Ryan Turford. Now, as mentioned on last week's episode, we're going to continue to live in the world of superheroes. I mean, uh, for the most part, we had some pretty good superhero games on Xbox. I've talked about it before with X-Men Legends 2, as well as the original X-Men Legends. I talked about it with Spider-Man 2, as well as Ultimate Spider-Man. And this week's game is actually no stranger to it. In fact, I actually think this is probably my very favorite superhero game of the sixth generation. And again, there were a lot of super gay old games to choose from. There were a lot of ga good games um, based on superheroes that didn't make this list. Stuff like Batman Begins, for example, comes to mind, which was like this really interesting, like Splinter Cell-esque, you know, stealth Batman game I thought was really interesting. Um, and we had a lot of experimentation. And again, no game really exemplifies that more than the Incredible Halt Ultimate Destruction. Now, the Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction was actually a surprisingly good release uh, from the studio Radical Entertainment, um, who many people, if that name doesn't ring a bell, they're more of an uh, Activision support studio now. But the reason why I say it was kind of a surprising release for them as far as uh, the quality was concerned is their games were always you know, very hit or miss. They're they're the studio that is known for old NES games like The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle, The Terminator and Wayne's World. And if you know anything about NES games, you know that those games are really bad. Um, they're also known for the NHL Power Play series in the, in the mid 90s. They also did a bunch of other sports games as well. Um, they're also the studio that did the Independence Day game on PS1. If uh, and again, if you know anything about PS1 games, whew, the Independence Day game is probably one of the worst games on PlayStation 1, but the Power Play games weren't that bad, actually. They're actually pretty fun sports games, um, and uh, actually during the sixth generation of consoles, they really focused on licensed games. Uh, that, that was kind of where most of their games came in. They, they were responsible for games like uh, James Cameron's Dark Angel, as well as they had the Simpsons license, so they actually did the Simpsons Road Rage, as well as the excellent Simpsons Hit and Run, which we may or may not talk about on a later episode. We'll see about that. Again, I don't give spoilers for the crossroads, okay? That's not how this works. Um, and that just brings us to today's game, because all those games led up to, to the Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction, which came out in 2005. And it was actually, again, the same year 360 came out. So again, another one of these later ex original Xbox releases. Again, you're kind of starting, probably starting to see a pattern with my list, because a lot of these, a lot of the best games on the original Xbox really came out towards the end of the life cycle of the original Xbox. Um, besides games like Halo and that, that came out earlier, a lot of the better games actually started to come out as more and more developers, for example, had their hands on uh, doing open world games, for example, as this is an, another open world game. Um, and here's the thing that I have to preface before I go any further with, with the Hulk. Everyone knows who listens to the show that I don't love superheroes. I mean, superheroes have never really been my jam. Um, they were a, a little bit when I was a kid. Uh, I used to collect comics with with my older brother. Um, I used to be obsessed with X-Men, for example, when I was growing up. Hawkeye was my favorite superhero, though. The reason why I liked Hawkeye, though, number one, he was cool and had a bow and arrow. But number two, he didn't have super superpowers because superpowers to me are kind of, I don't know, boring, I guess. It, and again, this is coming from someone who loves anime like with like over the top stuff. So again, take that all that with a grain of salt. So for me to love a superhero game, it really takes a lot. It really does. But again, with what I talked about with Spider-Man two last week, and then with the incredible Hulk, honestly, this game really shot through, through the roof of my expectations in spades. Like this game is awesome. And, and that also comes from someone who, Again, even uh, someone like me who doesn't like superheroes, but also rates Hulk pretty low on my superhero tier list. I mean, that's why it was so surprising to see an amazing Hulk game that captured even someone like me who who's not a Hulk fan at all, who thinks that the game itself 
even if it didn't have Hulk in it, would be fun to play. And I think that uh, that counts more than anything. Not all that, but it really makes you feel like the character. And I've talked about that a lot when it comes to licensed games. The thing that always really makes the the licensed games, the best licensed games are the ones that really make you feel like that hero to make you feel like you're in, you're in that boots because that's kind of the fantasy. That's what you want. That's what you want to, you're playing like the Spider-Man game to feel like Spider-Man and uh, you play the incredible Hulk ultimate destruction to feel like the Hulk and break a whole bunch of stuff and Hulk smash. You know, that's kind of what this game is all about, but I'm going to tell you more about this right now. Now, in case you haven't played it, you play as Bruce Banner as he's on the run from the NSA who's trying to capture the Hulk. At the same time, Bruce's health is starting to deteriorate as he tries to develop a cure for the Hulk as well as his own health. After being forced out of his lab in the middle of nowhere by the NSA, Bruce meets up with his friend Dr. Samson as the two of them try and come up with a plan to control the Hulk using hypnotic suggestion in order to gather materials to help save Bruce. The story itself in this game, it's, you know, very hit or miss. I mean, it's very predictable comic book fare. But this is the type of game where I, I honestly don't think you're playing it for the story. It's like uh, it, it reminds me so much of Radical's one of Radical's later titles, Prototype, which uh, people might remember from the 360. It was an open world game um, where, again, it was kind of in the similar vein of Hulk Ultimate Destruction, where, again, like I don't think the story was very strong in that either. But the game Prototype itself was fun to play because it was fun just going around the city, causing mayhem as that character. And that is more emblematic of this care of this game more than anything but in a way it's a hulk game you're kind of i mean for the most part i it makes sense that they'd put the gameplay first and foremost before the story and again it has like a very traditional hulk story you're see, gonna see very familiar characters like thunderbolt as well as uh the abomination as well as a whole bunch of other hulk specific characters um but for the most part while i was playing it i wasn't really feeling the story. But again, I'm also not the target audience for this. I think Hulk fans are probably actually going to like the story because, again, it's very reminiscent of the Hulk comic books or even um, something like the Incredible Hulk animated series that came out in the 90s. Um, so if you're into that, then I think you'll probably like the story. But for me, it's OK. Um, it's And that's part of the reason why this game isn't actually higher on my list is that um, it's great in all the other areas, but the story is it's uh, something. Let me tell you what. It's not terrible, but it's it's also not amazing either. As the Hulk, you can freely explore the city to your heart's content, smashing things along the way. The city is filled with tons of side quests, main story quests, and collectibles to find along the way. While there's a lot to do, the game doesn't really overstay its welcome, and you can finish it in about 10 hours or so, which I think is a good length for a game like this. Again, when the whole basis of your game is, hey, how much mayhem can I cause in a city as the Hulk? You know, you probably don't need to have a long run time or anything like that. Um, again, it doesn't feel too samey or anything like that, but it starts to become samey right as you finish the game, which I think honestly signifies that it, the game itself has the perfect length. I think that 10 hours is probably all you really need is the Hulk. And I think that it's actually a really fun 10 hours. So what exactly do you do in this game? First of all, of course, you run around as the Hulk. You're in this big city. You punch stuff. When you punch stuff, it goes super far. It doesn't feel like Avengers where when Hulk punches stuff, you know, it it feels like anyone else punches. No, you feel the impact every time Hulk punches in this game. Um, I mean, not only that, but you can pick up tanks. You can pick up cars. You can pick up people and then either slam them on the ground or throw them at other people. Um, you can also run up walls. Again, very reminiscent of what we see with Hulk in the MCU movies. Um, and you're really just running around this giant city just again causing as much mayhem as you want to, or again, just focusing on the single player story if you want to as well. Um, it, it gives you a lot of freedom when it comes to this game. Obviously, if you cause too much mayhem, of course, the Hulk is a superhero. So, I mean, there are consequences for that. I mean, you do have uh, more and more uh, army forces really coming up against Hulk if you cause too much mayhem. Um, and it's all about kind of that that balance, kind of like Grand Theft Auto, where you, you it's fun to go around and just cause mayhem every once in a while. But obviously you don't want to do it all the time um, or else, again, the, the game kind of becomes tedious. You've got like eight attack helicopters flying around you and you got to, you know, figure out how you're going to destroy all of them because there's not so much in the city. Again, Hulk, he can't really punch very far. So, I mean, for the most part, like you could jump really high in this game. Um, but for the most part, it's uh, it's tougher to kill some of the larger aerial enemies. 
as far as traversal in this game, that's one of the places where I think the game probably holds up the least um, because while the, the combat and the gameplay itself are really fun today, uh, the traversal is a bit, a bit of an issue where, um, again, for the most part, you can do really long jumps and you can do really high jumps, but you can't really combine the two. And sometimes it makes getting around the city a little bit difficult. You could also run, run along walls, which I actually really appreciated. It was actually one of the first 3D games I can think of where like that was a huge component of the movement set was running along walls. It wasn't until again, we got stuff like Titanfall and other more modern shooters that we were really started to work as see that work as well into, into pro platforming action. But as you roam through the city, sometimes you'll get stuck on the side of the building or sometimes you'll run up the side of a building, but Hulk will be like maybe going to the left or to the right a little bit. And then you'll just fall off the side and you have to run the whole, up the whole building again. Cause you can't really, you know, hop back onto a building once you started falling down. Likewise, if you jump at a building, you can't start running up the building instantaneously like modern games. You basically have to wait for Hulk to land. Then you got to run up the side of the building, which again is of a bit of a pain. And uh, again, when in the from the lens of 2021, it definitely uh, stands out a lot more um, in a negative way than it probably would have been when you first played that. Like again, when I first played this game, when it came out, like, that was that was huge. That was almost that was revolutionary. Like you didn't really have other third person act, open world action games that were really like this. Um, so it was really interesting to see um, a character do this besides Spider-Man. I think Spider-Man 2 was like the only other game we really saw uh, during this time frame that really, you know, put a lot of uh, thought into the open world movement and giving you a lot of unique ways to traverse the city. Visually, the graphics actually hold up surprisingly well, well in this game. Again, I think that the artistic style that they went with here um, with Hulk, for example, I think he looks pretty good and all of the characters themselves look pretty good as well. The environments, though, definitely do start to show their age a bit, especially if you do play this on its higher, highest resolution, because one cool thing about Hulk Ultimate Destruction being a later uh, original Xbox style is it actually supports 720p. So if you've got a pound HDMI cable or the AV pack, or if you've got if you're really lucky and you've got one of the chimeric systems uh Xbox HDMI outputs, you know, I think you're going to have a really great looking game here uh, with Hulk Ultimate Destruction. Or if you play this on, play this on 360, I think it looks really good there as well. Um, but it, it's just one of those things where um, visually itself, I think it still looks pretty good. It doesn't look amazing. And again, I think a lot of it just has to do with the fact that they really tried to be they, they're almost very more comic booky with the character designs, but more realistic with kind of the environments themselves. And I think that's cut what's caused them to age the fastest, especially like the desert area you're in at the beginning. It just, it doesn't look great if you're looking at it today, uh, especially again at that higher resolution. Um, but honestly, I think it looks pretty good overall. And uh, I think that it stands the test of time, both with the gameplay and with the visuals. I think that um, Hulk ultimate destruction is actually a great pickup today, especially again, if you're a Hulk fan, you're going to love this game if you've never played it. Um, like, I think that obviously my criticisms aside, as far as the movement tech and the story are concerned, I think there's a lot to love about this game. Again, it's a lot of fun just to run around the city, pick up two cars and then put them on your hands and start punching other cars or tanks with it. Like doing all the Hulk stuff like this is the ultimate Hulk fit power fantasy. If you've ever wanted to play as the Hulk in a game, you can play Avengers if you want, but I think that Hulk Ultimate Destruction does it way better. And I think that it's definitely the best way to play a Hulk game today. Now, if you're looking to pick up Hulk Ultimate Destruction today, it is backwards compatible on 360 with no issues as far as I can tell. And you can play it on the original Xbox. Again, I highly recommend it if you are going to play it on the original Xbox to get yourself either the AV pack uh, with the component cables or something like the pound cable or the Chimeric Systems uh, HD uh, MI cable. I think that that's what's going to make it look best. You're going to want to play this game at 720p if you're going to play it today. Whereas if you play it on 360, you don't have to worry about that because it plays it at that resolution. It plays it at the highest resolution anyways. In fact, it'll even upscale the picture to 1080i as well. So um, it's really cool to have that as an option uh, if you want to go the, the 360 route as well. That's all for this episode of The Crossroads. You can hit me up on Twitter anytime at Ryan Turford. You also find the Pants Man himself on Twitter at Sean Capri or us on Twitter at The Xbox Drive. Thanks so much for watching or listening to this episode of The Crossroads and we out. 